Leia, Twitter fingers, Jansen. <laughs> What's up? What do you think of the nickname? I mean, it's great. Fitting? It's, great. it's pretty fitting. You know, like, lately, <laughs> I, you know, I, did, I realized the power of Twitter when I was watching, you know, the APP final and just like, I had talked about not playing singles before and actually James Ignatowicz went on and said it in multiple interviews that uh -huh. he thinks singles should be gotten rid of, but... Uh, so I just decided to tweet it and I didn't, I honestly didn't realize the backlash, <laughs> yeah. but that's when I realized Twitter has like power. So right. it was a good learning lesson. <clears throat> yeah. I like Twitter fingers. I'm just going to interject here. I like Twitter fingers, but I think that you should be called the honey badger because honey badger doesn't give a shit. Yeah. <laughs> With my comments back. 100%. Oh yeah. Yeah. Like somebody says something dumb in the comments and Leia is like, Oh, it. I'm on she, it. She is all over it. I'm on it. Well, I just really, I, I know that like, I'm not going to change people's minds, but I just want them to let them know because <laughs> some people like make it so personal. Like that lady on Facebook who was just like, you know, the Leia who I knew, I'm like, I don't even know you. You don't know me. <laughs> you said hi to me one time. I'm sure if you said hi to me now again, I'm the same person actually to not call me, to call me not humble. Anyone who knows me like, I struggle with my on-court confidence. That's mm -hmm. like one of the bigger things about me. So when you just make it personal and you absolutely have zero clue what you're talking about, then I interject. Right. Pop off. <laughs> yeah. I love it. I love it. It's, it seems like, again, when we first started this podcast, it was like at the beginning of this year and we started talking about how like mm -hmm. the kumbaya era of like all the, the, yeah, yeah, the right. pickleball players being nice and everything. It's like that shit's over. And it's for sure over now. <laughs> like, it's, it's, people always are like, and, and I get it because the fans, like this is their social setting. So they don't understand for us, it's not really our social setting. Like to maybe to some it is, but for me, this is a job and this is like really how I make my money. So right. if there's shady stuff going on, I'm not, not going to not say anything. Yeah. yeah. What shady stuff is going on? <laughs> I mean, I, I'm all over Twitter with it. So there needs to be some rules and regulations. I mean, I'm, I'm getting really sick of it, as I think others should be. <laughs> yeah. What, what, in, what in particular? Like, you change one thing. What's, what's the number one thing that pickleball needs right now? Drug testing. Absolutely, 1,000%. We need a player handbook. And we need drug testing. Um, because no one really is breaking the rules because we don't – have a rule saying you can't use this, you can't use that. You need a prescription for if you're going to use this. Um, it's just kind of a free for all, and they're not really breaking the rules because we don't have a rule. And any right. sport, especially if we're going to get betting in, we need we need drug testing. And like classic sociology teaches you, like you know, if there's a will, there's a way. So if like there's something to be had, especially hundreds of thousands of dollars in sponsorships. And there's no rule to not cheat. People are going to cheat. That's just human nature. True that. Hot start. Didn't expect a sociology. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, <laughs> seriously, it's like uh, when people are like, well, you're just, uh, I've had a lot of people DM me and be like, you're just not happy for other people. I'm like, first of all, <laughs> I've had a great year. You yep. can't, if I, if someone were to tell me seven tournaments in how much I've meddled in singles and doubles, I would be like, not expecting it at the beginning right. of the year. So I just kind of want a more even playing field. Are yeah. you going through my Twitter? Yeah. Well, <laughs> specifically what you just said, because it was like uh, I saw a tweet that was just basically like you pretty much medal every tournament you play in for singles. Yeah. Uh, and it's not always gold. So maybe you sort of fall under the radar, but your consistency is off the charts. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's been a medal in every tournament this year, right? Every singles event that you've played. Yeah. That's right. impressive. Um, only didn't play in Austin. Right? Yeah. I didn't want to do a back to back. Yeah. And okay. that was kind of the main reason for it. Right. Well, um, you should try some recovery steroids. Yeah, I should, you know, I might as well just get with the crew, <laughs> you know, that's the thing. Like, uh, where I'm just like, I'm ranked this high and I know for a fact that there's people cheating at the top and I'm not. Right. So that's where a lot of the frustration right. comes in. At what point do you just go get a delaminated paddle? Just to even the playing field. Exactly. 
I mean, Zane, what do you, when, when would you, because <laughs> I mean, we've gone through some frustrations being singles players in the paddles that we right. used and like not been able to use. I mean, last year it was the, the spin this year. It's the, it's the power. And I think that last year, the spin more affects the men's singles game yes. for sure. The yes. power much more affects the, the women's singles mm -hmm. game. Right. Um, I don't know. I've been, I, I discussed this with you over the weekend. What I'm curious what happens if I go to the next event and I say, I, I make a statement, I tweet out beforehand, I'm going to play today with a delaminated paddle. I'm going to, I've been on steroids for, for <laughs> forever, but I'm also going to take an Adderall yeah. and I'm going to call every ball out and I'm going to play my tournament. Like, I, I think at this point, even if I were to say all of those things, there, there still, I don't think are any repercussions. No. Right. I'm sure, I'm sure somebody makes a public statement. It's like, okay, you're making a, you're making a mockery of, of us. Like we're going to come down on you. But as of right now, there's nothing basically like you can, if I were to do this and I'm playing against Leia, Leia could send my paddle back to uh, the national testing, but the result from that match is done. Right. It doesn't matter. It takes yeah. two weeks to get the results back. By that time, our match is done. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I think that's part of your frustration from, from this weekend so yeah would you mind taking us through like exactly what happened in the in the match with salome and and you know what your what your thoughts were salome can we get can we get to the bottom of this name how do you say nah. the name? isn't it salome salome I salome know. i don't know i anyway. i don't know <laughs> we'll figure that out another Leia's time. over it <laughs> yeah um so a lot of my frustration was i walked up I, w I was warming up in the other court and I walk up and Elise turns to me and says, this is not fair. It's a completely different paddle than uh, Elise had just beaten her uh, 10 days before, right? We're just gonna say her. Yeah, <laughs> 10, days, 10 days before and hitting a completely different ball. So now, what was she playing with? Do she was playing with her, the, her usual, the Yola, which okay. um, I think it's either the Ben Johns or the Hyperion. Um, that she consistently waits up and she said uh, and she was pretty confident going into that match um, and because she had a pretty solid game plan and she said like she's like I'm about to fall over when I hit the ball as you can imagine at least is small um, <laughs> and likes to fall over yeah, exactly. <laughs> and um, at that point I mean when I walked into the place Tyson was playing Travis Rettenmeyer and you could hear Tyson's paddle from a mile away I remember turning and telling Jay like Tyson's using a delaminated paddle um, and we had heard that Travis had challenged his paddle. So she asked me if she could challenge it. And I said, yeah, you can challenge it. Um, and then- Wait, who asked you? Elise asked you? Elise asked me I, once the match was done, she turned to me and said, are we allowed to challenge delamination? I said, yes, you are. Um, so then they go up to the net. And what actually started it was, I'm not even playing her at this point, And I'm just standing there. And she says, well, Leia's gonna, I'm like, what? what are you talking about? Like, I'm not challenging your paddle right now. Like." You can save this one for later. So they go over, they have a big talk. Don Stanley, she is well aware that we think this paddle is delaminated. Mm -hmm. She is well aware of the sound. They're banging on it. They're having a big, long discussion. And Elise is frustrated. She thinks she just got cheated out of that match. Now she has to go to the back draw. Um, and she, so then Tyson, when he was aware of his, changed his out. Salome, I thought she was going to, I thought, no way she's going to show up with this paddle. She shows up with the same paddle. What type of paddle was it? It was the Bactic Pro. Okay. And everyone said, and I, I we're pretty well aware with the Bactic Pros because um, Elisa's husband uses one and it's actually pretty soft and her mm -hmm. mixed doubles partner, Spencer Smith uses it. Yeah. So yeah. first couple points, like I can just feel it on my volleys. And then she, what really did it in was, um, I just developed a new serve and I've been working hard on it. And I served Brooke Buckner off the court, who I was actually more worried about than my semifinal because I had played both Elise and Salome before. I've never played Brooke before. And I have a lot of respect for Brooke's singles game. Um, and she just hits a return winner. And then every serve is just like jumping into me. And what really became noticeable is when I hit a dip because I couldn't get in off her serve, she, I dipped it low, she volleyed and it, volleyed like 20 she tried to hit a drop volley and it like goes out i'm like <laughs> you're kidding me like nice paddle like, yeah. so then i mean i can admit like my emotions got the best of me but in that match 
with altitude and she's just smacking this ball, knowingly using a paddle that we think and know is delaminated. I was like, this is, this is a joke. Like why I, I, I should have just stopped the match and not even played. And like, if I were to go back, um, and then I just kind of want to get the ball controversy out. Can I do that? <laughs> the ball controversy any controversy you want like. so everyone was like well leia with the ball against salome was like i'm like okay we need to go back to daytona first off i lost 1000 percent respect for salome in daytona what what little i had left was when um we were warming up and i just like waved my hand and i had to walk off the court because my blood sugar was at 40. Mm. Any diabetics out there, mm. anybody who has any understanding with diabetes, know when you're at 40, you're gonna fall over, you're gonna pass out. And this is before a big semifinal. So I had to go over, at least gave me um, apple juice, I think. Yeah, so I'm chugging apple juice. And she goes victim mode and goes, oh, she's not even warming up with me. I'm like, this is a hand, like I'm playing with a handicap. Mm. This is a handicap, I'm about to fall over and die. Um, and that was like the big controversy before that match. And she proceeded to go out and tell people, tell people on a blog that I wouldn't warm up with her. I, I always warm up with my opponent. I had to walk off because I'm about to die. Mm -hmm. And like, I ended up beating her in that match. And like, I was about, most people wouldn't have even played that match. So anyway, um, and then during the match, the ball kept on misbouncing. And you can hear me the whole time. I'm like, this ball. And I kept on trying to change it out. She wouldn't change it out until she got a bad bounce. So hold on. Did, did she have to agree to yes. change the ball? Both people have to agree. So she didn't want to change it out because she was hitting heavy serves. And I'm like, this ball, we can go back to the match. So then she gets a bad bounce <laughs> in that match. And she goes up to the ref just to go change it out. I'm like, no, 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 no. Don't you remember last time? No, give me that ball. And everyone's like, Oh, Leia, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, listen, you guys don't know the passiveness of what yeah. she does. And then um, I complained about her yellow shirt during that match. So she cheated twice, in my mm -hmm. opinion. She had a delaminated paddle. She had a yellow shirt, which USAPA rules. Right. You can't have a yellow shirt. And I told the ref that. Right. He's like, well, she only has one shirt, just like she only had one paddle, I mm -hmm. guess, for the match. Like, Wasn't it, it's like tournament director discretion at this point. So like you can be, you can challenge a player's shirt and it goes to the director of the, the tournament this year apparently okay well she should be forfeited for that match for the shirt too <laughs> I, I think connor pardo would agree with me um where was connor this is connor Utah wasn't too. there yeah connor. connor wasn't there where he at so he, the ref actually didn't even tell don stanley because i think don stanley would have sided with me um and so after the match i'm like and you wore a yellow shirt tell me why you're wearing a yellow shirt and she goes oh well my sponsor gave me this shirt i'm like nike it's a nike shirt Look, right. nike sponsored Right. sponsored her like so it's just like he has other shirts too <laughs> it's a lot of stuff i'm not the only person who has a problem with her and that's why um a lot of people are like well salome is so respectful even during daytona she tells Leia nice shot listen people i know the coach who salome works with and he knows me very well he tells her just like simone used to do he tells her to tell me nice shot because you don't want to start it with me. You don't like Salome used to stare me down and stuff and that's just playing into my game. So now she does yeah. this turn behind, oh, good shot to try and get in my head. Mm -hmm. So it's not being a good sport. She's really passive. She's really just overall, this is why it's, and now if you wanna take me out of the equation, that's fine. Mm -hmm. I understand I'm way more controversial, but when you add in Catherine Parento, Elise Jones, Megan Fudge. You don't even have to put Irina in there, but Irina, like all of us all have a problem when we play her. Right. Like there's a reason why. Mm -hmm. And she knew, like if I had been Elise, I probably would have just handled it like Elise, but she was told that paddle was delaminated and she chose to use it in my match anyway. Mm -hmm. I, I should have defaulted, but I thought there was no way she was gonna show up with that paddle. Right. So you you play the match. Um, you're pretty clearly rattled in the in the second. You, you lose. Yes. And then what happens? Then I said, then I forced the paddle challenge. Okay. And so paddle challenge. There wasn't paddle challenging available on site this time, mm -hmm. which there has been recently. Um, so essentially, the paddle is getting shipped to a a testing facility in. 
if that's know. the right paddle too because right that's that's what i was going to ask you did you witness this paddle being taken from her and then i didn't and i kind of after thursday just stepped out of it because i didn't want to become like more of it and i wanted to trust it but i'm hoping that there was some protocol that it was the right paddle because you can hear it very firm and clear and um right if she's smart she has four paddles in her bag yes and has one that's not and i don't like with her integrity i don't really trust it so i'm hoping there is some protocol put in to be to like to make sure of it because it was it was obvious and like like i said i know i'm controversial i'm gonna call stuff out as i see it but elise really doesn't like controversy like that whole national stuff she stayed pretty quiet because she she didn't like it um so for her to to be upset about it and force a paddle challenge like i i i just think you know rules are rules and you know when you break them mm -hmm. it's interesting that like she used the same exact paddle you'd think once a paddle has been challenged that that paddle should basically be taken out of circulation for the tournament yeah. right I, like because the whole thing was pretty weird and fresh because there's no there's now no she's already having the paddle challenged why wouldn't she continue to use it right like i mean at, at that point you know at right. what you might as well and you're already uh, getting your, your stuff challenged you're already if it comes back to be delaminated you're already forfeiting all of your your prize money you're already forfeiting all of your points mm -hmm. why would you not continue to use that paddle yeah exactly so i i think i kind of think she also used it to practice and then because i was when i was watching the singles final first of all Catherine can handle power much better than me now i guess and um she also because Catherine was able to extend those rallies where me and elise couldn't she just eventually lost control and i was like that thing is on its way to being completely delaminated now because by the end it was just like <sighs> Did you watch you? So you watched the finals. Did you were there? Was there commentary? I'm sure there was plenty of YouTube commentary, but did you could you hear anything from the um, from the, the live stream or were you there in person? I was just watching the live stream. I actually don't look at YouTube comments, actually, which oh, I, really? think, I think is good for me. <laughs> <laughs> They're, they're pretty they're pretty Sometimes. golden yeah. <laughs> they're just brutal. they're entertaining yeah, yeah they're just brutal like lauren stratman was telling me one time like the, about the youtube comments after her minnesota final i'm like you're not even controversial i'm not right. even ever gonna look at them right yeah yeah the weird the weird part i've noticed lately about the the youtube chat is like salome gets in there and starts talking and all of oh of she's course she's friends with everybody she she talks to everybody in the Very YouTube chat. very <laughs> strategic yeah she talks to everybody in the youtube chat yeah. she talks to nml i mean like it it's just kind of like stop like you know and if it's just annoying too because that's the i was pissed when i started seeing the oh Leia wouldn't warm up with me and then it's in the nml blog well this is a win for salome because the, her opponent warmed up with her I lose complete respect for people when you don't understand my diabetes. I always warm up with you. I had to step off that court and make sure I was going to stay alive because when you're at 40, you're about to pass out. And I still came in and beat you. So imagine what I could do with no diabetes. So it was that, that, that was where I lost complete and utter respect for her and anyone who wanted to say anything about it. You need to understand diabetes and you need to just like <clears throat> step out of the situation and not give your opinion. Mm -hmm. Do you ever worry about just like saying this stuff publicly? Like, I mean, because so many of us are are afraid to to speak our mind, at least until at least until somewhat recently. Like, I think a lot of pros are definitely talking more and more likely to to say things. Yeah. But like, do, do you ever think twice about about like coming on here and, and saying this type of stuff or no, not for this stuff, because I feel like she's already out there flooding it with like, I'm a bad, this I'm a bad sport. Um, certain things. Yeah. And like, to be honest, I, I know I'm really setting myself up for some hatred. So I've been thinking about it more. I actually kind of was talking to Matt right about that today. Like you can't worry about the keyboard warriors, but some, some they do get in your head mm -hmm. from time to time. Mm -hmm. Um, because Matt was saying like, use he would, it. He, yeah. He would, <laughs> he would, he would go Goggin style. Yeah. yeah. He would go even harder out on the court if it weren't for that. So sometimes I do, but sometimes it's like, it's getting to a point where I think people are like passively doing it. So I might garner some hate, but it's not like I'm 
vouching for a bad cause in my opinion mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i would say on on twitter i would say you're you're two-thirds to one-third like positive to to hate yeah it seems like at least two-thirds of people like agree with the stuff that you're saying one-third hate you oh yeah <laughs> no no there's, there's like total hate like 100%. and that's that's fine and um actually my dad told me that if someone takes the time out of their day to absolutely hate you um that's more on them than you right and that's kind of like always kind of what i thought um i always say like how many tweets and stuff does lebron get like i remember growing up and like being like oh my god lebron he complains all the time he's such a baby like who am i lebron to lebron nothing you know like if you're out there people are gonna have an opinion on mm -hmm. you true that whether you're a, like a, a decent person or not like exactly. lauren, lauren getting getting crapped on for the minnesota final like for people just, are gonna what like she was doing nothing she was just playing you know i actually don't know what yeah what exactly went down i didn't but... really ask her she just said the youtube comments were awful and like to me i think lauren's a good sport i think she's she never does anything really out on the court she's just pretty much to herself and so if you find a problem with that <laughs> like you're gonna find a problem with. well me. i think that's something to keep in mind you could be you could do everything right yes you could avoid controversy at all costs you can be the most respectful player somebody out there there's enough people watching now somebody out there is going to find a reason to criticize you well so i actually was telling somebody this this weekend of like it's kind of funny because a lot of people message me like you don't know what you're doing i'm like you guys don't think i know what i'm doing <laughs> yeah. like so i remember last year in orlando a lot of people reaching out to me and like stuff and they're being like why don't you ever smile on the court why don't you do this i'm like what am i doing like and it's like i it, this was kind of a constant thing all year like last year i was not even bad not anything but people still had a problem with me so going into this year kind of I, I i figured out i played better with a chip on my shoulder so going into this year i'm like you know what people have a problem with me mm -hmm. anyway mm -hmm. I'm just going to go and go full force, full out. I'm going to be the villain because someone's got to be the villain. Yeah. I mean, a lot of people have talked about that. So I just kind of think it's funny. A lot of people are like, do you realize what you're doing? I'm like, you guys don't think I realize what I'm doing. I don't, I don't think of you as the villain. I think of you as somebody who's authentic. I think ultimately that wins out at the end of the day. As long as you're not being manipulative, deceitful. Yeah and you're being authentic, I think that wins out. I think your supporters actually will support you more and you'll win a lot of fa fans, but there will always be that small percentage, which is a little more nasty to you than the average player. Just because yes. you are out there giving your opinions and, and loud. Yes, and before I definitely, like last year, I think was more of an insecurity year for me. Um, I was playing with partners that were definitely more like, act like this do this and so i didn't want to yeah. rock the boat but i remember just in orlando like just after the final and like ever after my uh singles day just being like why don't you do this why don't you do this and just kind of deciding right there like next year i'm just gonna go full force right. because <clears throat> you'll get noticed that way you'll get more center court time and that's how sure. i play better yeah. and you know hate me or love me i think people know me more now than they did last year probably. yeah, <laughs> yeah. Definitely. That's, that's the truth. Um, yeah. It, and what do you say to the people like, I, I, you know, you, you mentioned me in one of those tweets and, and I think we've been in general agreement about a lot of this stuff, whether it's delamination, cheating, uh, PEDs, like getting rid of singles, <laughs> uh, not, not an agreement there. I understand your point, not an agreement. Um, but like, one of the most, one of the recurring pieces of, I guess, hate that, that I've been seeing is like, people saying quit whining figure out your own game yeah yeah that's my fave like uh, well, and what's your what's your response to something like that so on the singles one especially it was just like i'm just typing out an idea and secondly uh you can't really take away from my game like that's where i felt like i was good and when people were like stop whining about her paddle blah 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 i'm like you guys i own that head to head like when I see Salome Devite in my in my side, I see that it's tough, but I always know I'm gonna win. Mm. The only time she beat me before this was when I picked up an engage paddle when I had been using a Yola one two days before and she barely beat me. And then I had game points in each of those games. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I own that head to head. 
and I'm actually playing better and working harder and getting better. People are like, oh, Leia doesn't want to play singles anymore. It's like, I work harder at my singles than anything. Mm -hmm. So I don't think you can say that to me. I think if you are saying that to me, you don't really know anything about pickleball, to be honest. Well, just I think maybe people don't understand just the exact impact that that something like this has, yes. right? Like, like using a, a delaminated paddle. People are saying like, just just figure out your own game and get and get better. It's like, and you're on your back foot. How are you right. supposed to? Well, the point that I made is that was a good. Point. Is like, if if Aaron Judge was allowed, basically, if if he went out there with an aluminum baseball bat. And Major League Baseball had no way of reprimanding him. There would be a lot of whiny baseball players. Yeah. yeah. Right. Like, and and can you blame them? At the end of the day, this is our our job. And when somebody is using an illegal piece of equipment, it makes it so that we can't do our job effectively mm -hmm. or to the same quality. Maybe an everyday example would be like you're a a car salesman at a, at a at a dealership. And you have quotas that you need to make, meet, right? Your buddy next to you found a way to f fabricate the system and make 30% more on all of his sales. And now you aren't getting bonuses because your buddy's outperforming you. Well, they're not really. Like they're, you're not getting sponsorships. You're not getting the same amount of prize money because the person next to you is is cheating. So like it can ha there are real life examples of this, and this is our job. So yeah, maybe we're gonna maybe we're gonna whine, but like when somebody's not playing by the rules, like I, I don't know what I don't know what people expect us. And and I play these people week in and week out. So if you just all of a sudden come up with this and you're getting way more power on your shots and you're running to balls way quicker, like we notice. Right. Like I I play you guys week in and week out. I study yeah. you guys. So you're not gonna trick me. And this is something where like, I, people don't think so, but I care very much about singles. Like actually singles day sets the tone for my doubles days a lot of the time. So mm -hmm. I, I really do care going into this year. I really worked hard to, on knowing I'm the number two and gaining on Anna Lee. And, uh, I've invested a lot of money work, looking up world-class, you know, off court trainers and people helping me to get in a lot better shape and gain more power and to beat them. But so when people are cutting corners, it's really frustrating to me. Yeah. Understandable. To clarify quickly, delamination, if you could just very quickly summarize, what are the two advantages that a delaminated paddle affords a player who's using it? Just in case there's any confusion around that. Well, it's the first strike and first singles is first strike. So if you're not gaining the first strike, you're always on defense. So you're you're constantly being pushed back and also balls that normally people can get to or winners. Like some of the shots that Salome was hitting, I like had a read on it, but it's past me mm -hmm. in any time mm -hmm. that I can even get yeah, there. Some, some of the some of the winners she was hitting, it wasn't even like it was dotting the line no you were, you were kind of in position yeah it was just sailing past you and that's what a, elise was texting me during the match and she was just like okay like these are clean winners on you i thought i was just short yeah you know so it, if you're just clean passing me at the net and i have a read on the ball something's up and the test for delamination would be the test for deflection slash dwell time yes uh, that's not how necessarily you would. well, well i'm, I'm different... saying like the official test so when the ppa implements these testing policies and can do on-site testing in order to flag a delaminated paddle they need to it, they need to flag it for deflection slash dwell time like that's the test no um a delaminated paddle would obviously be very high on dwell time and deflection okay and it would it would test out of spec on those things probably but that doesn't you can have a delaminated paddle that isn't delaminated in an effective way. We're talking about paddles that are delaminated effectively, like this one that increases dwell time and mm -hmm. and deflection. Um, you can have a delaminated paddle that's not effective. And the way that you would would test that, that from what I understand, that Carl is, is Carl Schmitz from USA Pickleball is, is talking about it. Is there's like this. Um, basically taking an almost an x-ray of the paddle that can see the space between mm. the the surface layer and the 
core of the paddle and see if there's a little bit of a pocket in there. So yes, you're, you're correct in, in how it would work for some of these paddles that are delaminating effectively, but not for every paddle. Like say, say my paddle got delaminated, my paddle would be shitty delaminated. Um, and it would not score higher on deflection or, or dwell. Um, but then again, I wouldn't be using it. Mm -hmm. So, um, that's, that's the thing. Like pros know, like we, we hear it. Like it's a very obvious sound. Like anyone from a mile away who has a brain nowadays can hear it. It is. It's interesting. Like I, I was talking with, with Rafa before our Saturday and we're just, we're chatting and all of a sudden somebody hits a drive three quarts over. I'm like, Oh shit. I feel like a, like a, like a, a vet with PTSD or something yeah. like that. When I hear one, I'm like, I can hear it from across the really? place. It's, it's like, it is actually to us, it Obvious. would sound the same yeah. as when somebody does go to a, a baseball bat, everybody else is hitting with wood mm-hmm. and there somebody hits with an aluminum. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like that's how, that's how clear it is to us. We need to get a video of, Two paddles side by side, one not delaminated, one delaminated, and just get a recording of this. Chris? I, I'll, I've, I've, I've been talking <laughs> to, the video to Pickleball Will about it. Yeah, yeah. My guy Pickleball Will. So yeah. also I kind of want to say if people want to say like, oh, well, you just bullied Don Salome. It's like three months ago when I played Irina Tereshenko at um, Desert Ridge right after. This was when the first whispers of delamination were starting. You can watch our bronze match. She was using a delaminated carbon. And – Every single time, I'm just like, nice paddle, Irina. Like, <laughs> that freaking paddle. Like, the whole time afterwards, I told her she should not use the paddle. That was three months ago. And Irina was like, oh, he's bullying me. And she was just like, eh, whatever. You yeah. know, no rule yet. And um, after that match, it's like when I was, when I talked to Connor and said, like, you, something needs to be done about this. That was three months ago. So if you're just showing up, three and a half months later and you're like no it's not delimited it's like where have you been where have you been but it wasn't just me bullying her the whole time while i was playing Irina, i was doing the same thing and i won that match but it was a lot so closer you'll, than you'll it bully anybody be. yeah exactly. <laughs> well i mean if you want to say that i mean there's you said it <laughs> like so that's what she says when bullying me i'm just like well if everybody treats you the same on the court maybe look inward that would be like me being like why do people tweet me mean things it's like well may, maybe don't be outspoken leia like if you're gonna do something expect something back um funny uh like going back to so anyway you, you have a paddle that uh that is being tested or is being sent to to nts do you have any idea what that means I, I don't <laughs> like that's the thing we none of us know none of us know if the, even the like there's just nothing like yeah I have, I have no idea what that there means. needs to be some sort of handbook there needs to be like the fact that we don't even have a wind ordinance in that's to me is like insane as well um yeah I'd, I'd be curious to have so I, I know that if if they've mentioned that if the a paddle fails that the person forfeits any prize money and mm-hmm. and points I'm just curious like when are the results of this going to be released? Are they going to be released? Is this going to be something dealt with like behind closed doors? Like it's going to get out. I, it's like, now what? Yeah, right? exactly. I mean, yeah. I feel like someone really needs to be made the example of. Um, so we'll see how it goes. And I think the problem with like a forfeiture of, of pay and points and prize money is it doesn't do anything for, for you. No, you lost pay and points and, and Price and money, yeah. like Anna Lee was not at that tournament as well. That was like a big, you know, that's where the other frustration was. It was just like, oh, you're going to do this when Anna Lee's not here. Cool. Like the one time you beat me. It's just right. And she knows she knows that's a big opportunity as well. So and I, I think like Travis said, like Tyson didn't want to give up his paddle when it was super dialed. That paddle was super dialed and she didn't want to give it up. There yeah. is a sweet spot with it. And once you go over, it's done. Um, yeah, I think there, that there's gotta be some form of, of suspension. Cause you can't do anything really about the tournament in which no. it occurred. No. Um, and so you need to really, I think you do need to make an example of, of somebody when a paddle does come back illegal. Um, yeah, that's, that's rough. Delamination. Another amateur question here. 
is it as effective as much of an advantage in doubles as it is in singles? I assume not. I, I don't think so. It, it depends on the person. If the person has crazy touch, you can you can use it well in doubles. Um, Thomas Wilson, I think, has like absurd touch, very soft yeah. hands. So he was able to do it. Um, and there's, you know, I'm sure there's a few others. Also, if you just take the time, like if I took six months to get really dialed in with that from going, then I could. But for singles, it's immediate right away. Because like I said, it's first strike, especially... Right. In, in with females where essentially the power game is huge right. you know guys is more you know angles spin cat and mouse for females it's like if i have my first strike i'm winning mm -hmm. yeah so the way that i see it there's i don't think any downsides to a delaminated paddle in singles no there are upsides and downsides to a delaminated paddle in in doubles right. like you're gonna have a harder time controlling some of your your dinks and your resets and whatnot um however long term Pros, pros holding their paddle control their control, right? Like I can learn to control a piece of plywood. Like it's me. I'm the source of control. To a certain extent, I'm the source of power, but also the paddle is a certain is a is a source of of power. So I can learn to control anything, mm -hmm. and then I'm looking for that advantage of having extra power. So yeah, like initially it'll probably give you worse dinks, but we can control yeah. anything, right? We, we can, can control learn. any any paddle, and then we're eventually only working with the with the upsides. Um, so I, I think it's it's tougher to to use right away in in doubles, but I think the same advantages over time are are there. And the biggest thing is just like being able to, on a reflex volley, just get the paddle in the way and have the paddle do essentially all the work for you is is enormous it's in hands battles huge. Yeah. it's huge just one ball counter see ya and then it changes like i've been in front of delaminated paddles like in mix i used to be fine with going out thomas and then i played him and it was mental like i didn't want to leave balls high i didn't want to leave my thirds high uh any speed up i was scared afterwards so it's it's it changes what you can do but also changes what your opponents can right. do. right it's interesting. Like the those the carbon paddles are, are really, really powerful, but I don't know if they I know that they, they have the possibility to delaminate, right? But maybe I just never played against Thomas where I thought it was the 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 paddle is powerful, right? For sure. But I don't I don't know if I ever played against them where I'm like, this is it didn't have the same the same degree of sound. I only played against him a few times and his ability to put the ball away and just uh, this as well was pretty was pretty insane. It was definitely much more significant than his Electrum. Yeah, yeah, that's for sure. It's, it's, he's definitely got a lot more more power now and compared that, to later. Not saying that, I mean, Thomas Wilson still hits the ball hard even without that. So he has the most lively arm on tour, mm -hmm. but there was just a certain degree of amped upness for sure. Yeah, I, no, was, I... I I don't know the answer to this, but I, I know like we had DJ in here and he said that he, he wasn't able to use the, the carbon mm -hmm. power series. I, I wonder if that's something that they're addressing. <clears throat> yeah, I, I actually, I just don't know. I don't know about that. Mm. So, mm. Well, shouldn't pros right now just be like searching high and low to find the perfect delaminated paddle? I mean, if there is no... If there's no rule, it, yeah, why like, not? Why not go search for that and use it every time like you two right now if you do have a delaminated paddle in its sweet spot you know it's hitting well and you've got increased power yeah are you going to keep it are you going to sideline it because you have integrity or well, are I don't you going to keep playing with it either of our you're using what a yola solar yeah the, the paddle that i'm using right now cannot uh de if it does it's it doesn't help. yeah neither of us are using paddles that would effectively delaminate or like uh, delaminate in a productive way um so yeah, I could delaminate or attempt to delaminate mine. I don't really know how to how to do it, but if I did, it'd be a pretty garbage paddle. Yeah. Well, here's uh, Lucy and Matt's paddles delaminate, and they meaningly don't use them when they delaminate. Yeah, because right. they're pretty against it. Lucy actually challenged the paddle this weekend as well for delamination. So, you know, I I do think people who are against it will not do it. Right. Um, and also, you know, we don't know what the repercussions are. Maybe Salome, if it's found to be uh, a delaminated paddle, uh, yeah, maybe like, she's suspended. Yeah. Like, if it's 
Yeah. So we don't know what the repercussions are. Right. Um, yeah, we don't. Hmm. It'll be interesting to see. I can't wait for, for whatever that, yeah, for for that a, to come out. I would like to know, too. Because we have, we have a couple weeks. We have two weeks off until Newport. Mm -hmm. After that's North Carolina, another couple weeks. I wonder, I'm curious how long this process takes. Yeah, we'll yeah. see. I hope I hear something. Like, I just, <laughs> just kind of want to know. <laughs> yeah. All right, Tommy, what else you got? I don't know. I, I'm just thinking about if I'm the, the PPA right now or any of these tours leagues, I like the fact that there's all this conversation. I like the fact that there's animosity. I like the fact that social media was ablaze talking about this whole delamination issue. I love that you're getting out there and, and tweeting and calling people out and everybody's all focused on these these controversies. I think it's like I think it's needed. Yeah, you got to bring eyeballs to it as well. But you also have to have like polarizing figures like I mean, like you can't just have everybody Ben and JW are great, but they're Ben and JW. It's like I hate it when people tell me like, look how Ben acts. I'm like, OK, me and Ben have completely different neurology makeups. Like we're <laughs> just not going to be the same people. And uh, you have to have different things and characters. And like, you know, tennis has never really become a mainstream sport. It's always struggled in the viewership and filling up stadiums. And, you know, uh, I'm a huge Novak fan. And I like I remember everybody just hated Novak. Yeah. Right. Like thought he was awful. But you have to have like s people like that and figures like that and people to make it interesting. To be honest, I found Zane w way more interesting to watch in Daytona than Zane not in Daytona. <laughs> Yeah, uh, you, I your guys' matches were the, well. funnest, were the funnest to watch. You DJ guys brings it out in me. <laughs> yeah, you guys were speeding up. You guys were getting chippy. I was like, wow, men's doubles is fun to watch right now. Yeah. And then, you know, J-Dub and the Johns went on for their semifinal, and I didn't watch that one. Right. Um, yeah, I think, I think yes. I think controversy is is good, but this isn't the controversy that they, yes. they want. They don't want right. cheating to be at the forefront yes. of things. For sure. Well, if right? you classify it as cheating, I mean, you guys keep using yes. the word cheating. I don't yes. know that it is cheating at this point. Well, it's just kind of like how I'm outspoken about people not using PEDs. Like, you can't tell me it's cheating because there's nothing written down that says you cannot use this. Right. It, you so you can't really you can't really say it. Yeah. But at this point, like someone tweeted at me, it's it's becoming like um, the Tour de France, and if you if you think about it in that aspect. I would really like to see everybody, if we said paddle testing, drug testing tomorrow before a tournament that everyone is at, let's see who all shows up. Let's see who would actually do it right now. I'm not saying everybody does it, but it's becoming like the Tour de France, where if you're going to be clean, if you're not going to be using illegal equipment, are, are you going to fall the, at the middle of the pack as people come in more and more? I right. mean, I truly do think so. Yeah. And so, uh, so I asked Connor this and Connor didn't answer, <laughs> but I, I've got a feeling you're going to answer. Uh, what percentage of signed PPA pros would you guess are on at a given time, a, some form of performance enhancing drug, whether that's steroids or, or Adderall, Adderall or, or anything else that enhances their performance <laughs> that would generally be considered illegal in other sports? I think it's a little more little more prominent than I would say 25 to 30 percent at least if we're including Adderall for sure and so do you think do you think Adderall is the the main culprit I don't I think that's the easiest culprit but I think those there are some definitely going beyond that um I would but I think Adderall is definitely the easiest culprit because if I had an Adderall prescription, you could be like, hey, Leah, I need it. And I can be like, oh, you know, it's just kind of like college. Um, so I think that's the easiest culprit and the most noticeable one because you can just see the signs when people are on it. Um, but there's definitely a lot more going yeah, on. The pupils. The <laughs> yeah, pupils are, like people. are big. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, the pupils are large. Yeah. Um, interesting. Um, I, I, and what do you, oh, go ahead. I was just going to say, I, I think that. Adderall is is less significant because you could theoretically mimic the effects, at least to a degree, by just being amped up on a ton of caffeine, right? Like I've done that. Ton of coffee. <laughs> yeah, and chug Celsius. Like, you know. Yeah. Typically those those advantages are the same. I think Adderall is just more sustained. Yeah. 
I did. I was at the. <laughs> this is a funny match. <laughs> I was at the the Franklin uh, U.S. So it was at the Tennis's U.S. Open last year. Oh yeah, yeah. And I they had these little hydration packets, and they were they're called Hydrant. And I've taken Hydrant a, a million times. Before. Bleep that out. Bleep that out, Jamie. <laughs> yeah, it's... Oh yeah, we have uh, we have somebody else. Yeah, we're working on it. Okay, we're working on it. Sorry. <laughs> um, I had like five or six of them because yeah. it was it was hot. It was like eighty degrees, and then I'm like I'm chugging these, and then I open up my seventh, and I turn it over. It says a hundred milligrams of caffeine. Yeah, <laughs> I'm like, holy crap! You're dying. And like you, you should somebody should go find some clip of me from that because I'm I'm like staring at the ground in between points. I'm like, my eyes had to have been so big. I was like, I think that was the only time last year that Andrea and I beat Deckel and and Vivian, and I was locked in. <laughs> <laughs> I was that was very much locked in. Yeah. Um, so yeah, definitely, definitely felt great. Mm -hmm. But that was caffeine, and a, a lot of it. Had to run to the bathroom a bunch of times. Yeah. <laughs> One of the that's downsides. The, that's the downsides. Yeah. I wasn't wearing my white Viore shorts, so we were good. And to me, like, you, you can't take away Adderall because once you just I, – I do think we need to make something where you have to have a script so people can't just be like, hey – blah, 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 let me have one. You know, I, I think there needs to be a script for it. But yeah, that's about, that's, I, I do think there needs to be other stuff. If betting's coming in and people are like, oh, well, pickleball, PEDs and pickleball is so lame. I'm like, it's taxing. It's also, it's also like, I, I think people don't know how much money like the top makes, you know, especially when you're at the top, you make a significant more. Like Anna Lee probably makes three times the amount that I do. So there is a lot. And we all know this is a short period of time. And then there's people who who have been on top where the, it would be like life changing if they weren't on top. So why would they not? Right. Well, the incentives are definitely there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. There's no doubt about that. Mm -hmm. um, OK. Anything else you wanted to bring up before we wrap? Floor is yours. <laughs> I don't know. I didn't have a rant. I didn't have a rant really, <laughs> really go going, but, um, no, that, that's it. I would just, uh, like to say, I mean, a, a lot of people think that, I mean, just to kind of reiterate my point to every, to all you talking heads out there, <laughs> you will not change my behavior. I am very well aware of what I am doing. And just like, um, Tyson has gone out and said a million times, like, Somebody in the PPA wants us to be controversial as long as you're being yourself. Well, Tyson knows himself that I am being myself right now. Yeah. Um, I've been like this. Like if someone wants to take videos of my 12 junior matches, like been like this for a long time. <laughs> so it's just kind of how how it's going to be. And I'm going to do it as long. And maybe I won't be as loud as if people follow the rules. Yeah. So. Well, we look forward to more of that. Yeah. If you love Leia, I, follow her. If you hate Leia, definitely follow her. Definitely. <laughs> I tried. I, I was wondering if my tweet today would be controversial. But what I'm was your tweet? We, yeah, well. Um, I'm making a prediction on uh, Iggy and uh, AB being, I mean, when I look at James, I just think that guy's got so much more room to grow. I think that's going to be like uh, Ben and Anna Lee have never had a true rival. And I think Anna Bright and James Ignatowicz will be much more of a rival than Riley Newman and Catherine. Yeah. Okay. I like it. All right. That's all we got. RepTheDink.com. Get your Ernie hoodie. It's the coolest hoodie in pickleball. That's it. Boom. Pop off. Yeah. I'm not gonna lie,